Hello guys, today we're talking about Amateur Radio Go Kits for Emergency Field Communications. This kit is mine, so I hope you'll stick around and go through it with me. Rock and roll. Let's get started. You are listening to the Emergency Broadcast Systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. As radio operators, we never know when we may be called to volunteer our time, expertise, and equipment in some sort of disaster, emergency, or grid-down scenario. Now, realistically, as individuals, there might not be very much we can do to prevent these disasters from happening, but we can be prepared with expertise and equipment when the situation arises. So like anything else in the survival and preparedness communities, this go kit is always a work in progress. It's never finished and it's never going to be. But this is where I am now, with an emphasis on MAM portable field communications. All right, here we go. At the core of my kit is the Yezu FT-817ND. The FT-817 operates on all amateur bands from 160 meters to 70 centimeters. The radio's got a pretty wide coverage receiver, covering short wave, AM and FM broadcast bands, and air, amongst others. There's also a Mars cap mod for this radio for people who need that capability. The radio can take eight AA batteries inside, so I've outfitted it with eight Eneloop Pros. But there's also a DC power port on the radio, which takes 9 to 16 volts allowing me to connect any external DC power source like a battery pack or DC power from the car. At the moment I'm experimenting with two different packs for the field. The one on the left is my own creation. It's a 5.4 amp nickel metal hydride pack based on Sanyo Evos. And that pack is rock solid but kind of low in capacity. Well, the pack on the right is an Anchor Astro Pro 2, something Urban Prepper turned me on to. And that has 20 amps of capacity and USB 9 volt and 12 volt output. The Anchor looks pretty good, but I still need to beat the hell out of it in the field. I'll let you guys know. Keeping my devices, radio, and battery packs charged up is the Power Film F16 20 watt folding solar panel. It hadn't arrived yet for this video, but I thought to include it anyway. Every good radio deserves an excellent antenna. This antenna kit was put together especially for the channel by Chameleon Antennas, and it's called the Impas. Modular Portable Antenna System This is an antenna system that can be configured for infed, vertical, horizontal, or invis, all with one system. Let's go ahead and break down all the components. At the heart of the antenna system is the Chameleon Hybrid Micro. It perfectly matches the Yezu FT-817ND's capabilities on HF and 6 meters. But you'd be wrong in thinking that this is a QRP antenna. It actually handles 100 watts output. It includes a 60-foot copper-clad wire and all stainless steel hardware. The next component in the system is the Chameleon Mill Whip. The Mill Whip replaces the copper clad wire from the Hybrid Micro for those situations where you need a self-supporting antenna. The way everything is set up now, it's kind of like a buddy pole and an Alpha Easy Military all in one. Managing the negotiations between my radio and antenna system is the LDG Z817. The Z817 tuner is a battery operated QRP automatic antenna tuner that works seamlessly with the FT817. And just like the IMPA system, the Z817 tuner works from 160 meters to 6 meters. To maximize performance and usability for the IMPA system, I've got a couple of additional extras. First I have this antenna tripod which I use when I'm set up as a field station in a camp for example where I want to have a freestanding vertical or horizontal antenna. 
And next I have the Chameleon Mill Extension or EXT. The mill extension actually extends the mill whip by 2 meters or acts as the second leg in a dipole configuration. Spearheading my emergency digital communications is a Samsung Galaxy S4 i9506. I've got it wrapped in a poetic revolution case which isn't waterproof, but offers very good impact protection. The S4 is an excellent high-speed low-drag option. When I need more processing power, or a bigger screen, I switch over to my Nexus 9. The Nexus 9 is also wrapped in a Poetic Revolution case, and I've got all the same apps running on the Nexus as I do on the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now, none of those applications would be of any use if there weren't the hardware to interface between the tablet, smartphone, and the FT817. For interfacing APRS with the APRS Droid app and the FT817, we're using the mobile-linked Bluetooth TNC. Audio routing and push-to-talk switching is handled by the Woofy Link interface. And finally, frequency changes, rig controls, and things like that are done through the Blue Cat interface. You'll be able to find everything you need about all of the components found in this video in the description. Stay tuned for other videos about the items you've seen in this video. Subscribe and thumbs up for more videos like this. If you have any feedback, leave them in the comments. And with that, I say rock and roll. Thanks for watching. Ciao.